On page one of his report, special counsel Herr said President Biden, quote, willfully retained and disclosed classified materials after his vice presidency when he was a private citizen. Joe Biden not only kept information he wasn't allowed to keep, he shared it with people who weren't allowed to get it. And on page 231, the special counsel told us why President Biden did this. He said, quote, President Biden had strong motivations to ignore proper procedures for safeguarding the classified information in his notebooks. He had decided months before leaving office to write a book, a book for which he got paid eight million dollars. So we have motive, an eight million dollar motive. We have the elements of the crime, knowingly keeping classified information, knowingly disclosing classified information. But despite all this, special counsel heard declined to prosecute, recommend prosecution for President Biden because Joe Biden is, quote, a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. On page 207 of his report, special counsel Hearst said Mr. Biden's memory also appeared to have significant limitations, both at the time he spoke to the ghostwriter, uh, ghost Mr. Zwanitzer, in 2017, as evidenced by their recorded conversations, and today as evidenced by his recorded interview with our office. The committees need the audio recordings to determine whether the Justice Department appropriately carried out justice by not prosecuting the president. Because remember what they told us. Justice Department said, we're going to operate independent of the White House. They said, we'll be impartial, independent arbiters of the facts. Okay, maybe so. But what we do know is this, one former president's being charged, Joe Biden's not being. We think we're entitled, actually, we know we're entitled to all the evidence and the best evidence. And the transcripts alone are not sufficient evidence of the state of the president's memory, especially since the executive branch has a history of changing transcripts. We saw this in late April. The transcript the White House put out didn't match the video and audio recording of President Biden's speech. And only after the White House was caught did they change the transcript. And in that case, and in this case, the audio recording is the best evidence of the words that President Biden actually spoke. Following the, re uh, the release of special counsel Hur's report, both the Judiciary Committee and the Oversight Committees issued subpoenas requiring Attorney General Garland to turn over the transcripts of the audio recordings of special counsel Hur's interviews with President Biden and his ghostwriter. To date, the Attorney General has failed to produce those recordings. In fact, he told us last week he wasn't going to do it. And that is why we're here. Despite the committee's best efforts, the department has continued to withhold the audio recordings of those interviews without providing any constitutional or legal basis to do so. Just hours before the committee was set to meet and consider the contempt resolution, the department notified the committee that President Biden had asserted at the attorney general's urging executive privilege over the audio recordings. It's simple. Attorney General Garland holds information vital to the committee's legislative oversight and the House impeachment's inquiry. Remember, this body voted, this body voted December 13th of last year to enter that phase of our oversight duty and impeachment inquiry. The department has a legal obligation to turn over the the requested material. Attorney General Garland's willful refusal to uh, constitutes contempt of Congress. This resolution upholds the institutional power of the House by recommending that the House find Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt of Congress for failing to comply with the committee's subpoena. Our oversight and impeachment responsibilities are too important to allow the Attorney General to willfully disregard this.